What's up, Falcons Nation? Welcome back to the channel. We've got a packed show today with some exciting news, some concerning updates, and a whole lot of discussion points. So before we dive in, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single second of the latest Falcons action. Let's get started. First up, some fantastic news. The Atlanta Falcons are reuniting with a familiar face, veteran wide receiver and return specialist, Jakeem Grant. Many of you will remember him from training camp. Unfortunately, an injury led to an injury settlement, but he's back, signed to the practice squad. Why bring Grant back now? Simply put, the Falcons need help in the return game. Avery Williams has shown flashes on punt returns, but the kickoff return game has been, let's say, inconsistent. Ray Ray McLeod hasn't quite filled the role either. Enter Grant, a former Pro Bowl returner who had a stellar 2021 season. The hope is he can reignite that spark and provide a much-needed boost to our special teams. But let's be real, Falcons fans, injuries have plagued Grant. While there's hope, expectations need to be tempered. Could he be the game changer? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the future. It's never too early to start planning for the offseason, especially when we have some key holes to fill. One name popping up in early free agency predictions for the Falcons is Nick Gates of the Philadelphia Eagles. Bleacher Report's scouting department has him as a potential target for 2025. With Drew Dalman nearing the end of his contract and Elijah Wilkinson and Matt Hennessy also pending free agents, a potential overhaul of our interior offensive line is on the horizon. Gates is versatile, having played four of the five offensive line positions. His contract is also budget-friendly at just over $1 million. Given the Falcons' projected salary cap space, a value signing like Gates would be a smart move. What do you think? Is he the veteran presence our line needs? Now for some concerning news. The Falcons may be without a key piece of their defensive line, James Smith-Williams. Our leading tackler for loss suffered an injury against the New Orleans Saints. While he finished the game, the prognosis isn't looking good, according to coach Raheem Morris. This is a big blow considering his impact this season. He's notched 24 tackles, one sack, and seven tackles for loss in only 46% of defensive snaps. With him potentially sidelined, our already struggling pass rush will need to find solutions. Can Khaled Kareem and D'Angelo Malone step up? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's address the elephant in the room, Young Hoku's performance against the Saints. Three missed field goals and a close loss, tough to swallow. In our weekly Tuesday Take segment, Kevin Knight and Tran Diaz discussed whether it's time to worry about his consistency. Is this a bump in the road or something more serious? Finally, we need to talk about our pass rush, or lack thereof, against the Saints. Zero sacks and only one quarterback hit on Derek Carr. Coach Morris attributed this not to regression but to the Saint offensive scheme under Clint Kubiak. While the defense did well against the run, that focus hindered their pass rush. The Saints effectively used a mix of run and play action to keep the defense off balance. This led to some big plays for Carr, including two long touchdowns. However, the defense did show resilience in the second half. Is this a coaching issue, a personnel issue, or both? Let's discuss. Falcons Nation, we've got some challenges ahead. The uncertainty surrounding James Smith-Williams, Young Hoku's performance, and our pass rush are all areas of concern. But as always, we know how to bounce back. How should the Falcons adjust for Week 11 against the Broncos? What are your thoughts on Ku, the pass rush, and Smith-Williams' status? Let me know in the comments below.